Black Oni. You're now listening to the Black Oni Podcast. Welcome everybody at home on YouTube and iTunes and also BlackOnlyBlog.com to another exciting episode of the Black Only Podcast. Uh, this episode is 35, all the, way, all the way up to 35. It's really exciting for me because, you know, I've been doing this for a little while. And um, the episode is called Why Gotta Be Black Friday um, because, you know, the running joke, of course, is, you know, the Black Friday, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. And I want to take a moment to introduce my two guests, uh, one of which who has been on the podcast already. You might remember him from before, Trinity Mark Blue. Hello. How's it? Yeah. He's putting on his headphones now. Yeah. <laughs> and we have uh, Insanely Gaming here, Mallory. Uh, we've been actually trying to get her on the podcast for a Hi, while. Hi. <laughs> I don't know. Finally, after like probably five or six attempts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a few attempts, a few attempts. But um, either way, I'm excited to have you on because there's a lot to talk about, and also um, I think you would have some really cool and exciting uh, energy to bring to the table. So, thank you for coming. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> and we're gonna jump right into the the uh, uh, icebreaker, and I'll ask you two. And myself, of course. Uh, what was the best and worst controller of all time, in your opinion? <laughs> well, I'm going to go first. I'll go first. You can go ahead. Okay, so best controller of all time. Got to be PlayStation 3 controller. Um, my hands are super tiny, and it's really difficult for me to play on controllers that are are bigger than the PlayStation 3 controller. So I'm going to just kind of spiral into the worst controller, which is the Xbox controller. Because it's just a little... I know everybody loves that controller, but it's just a little too chunky for me, and it hurts my hands. Like, it's funny because I love the PlayStation 3 controller, but I even have, like, a modded, like, Power A controller that I use for the PlayStation just because, like, the tinier the better. <laughs> Like, if it just be, like, this big. So, are you talking the original Xbox like controller in terms of, like, the one you don't like? like? I, I'm all about it. Even, like, the mice that I use, too. Just super tiny. So, yes. Yeah, I mean, I'm the Xbox 360 controller. Um, the Xbox one, or the Xbox, the original Xbox controller would be, I don't know, I, I don't like that controller either. So, maybe it's just because, like, I'm a PlayStation fangirl. I don't know. I think that might be it. <laughs> PlayStation fangirl. <laughs> might be a little biased. I don't know. Yeah, I think... Yeah, I, I, like, I like PlayStation a lot, so... I mean... I mean, for me, I have large hands, so, you know, when I have a small controller, it's very, uh, it's very strange for me, so I really like having the larger controllers. Um, but before I, I say what my favorite and least favorite is... Um, I find it really interesting, though, that your least favorite one is the Xbox 360 controller, because uh, a lot of people love that controller. Yeah. Like, love it, love it, love it. So, it's interesting. I know. That's what I said. It's, it's pretty, I think the, my opinion is pretty unpopular. To you. <laughs> you know <that. laughs> and uh, what about you, uh, Trinity Mark Blue? Um... I feel a little bit similar. I, I like the DualShock controllers, all of them, for a while up until now. They were the same for like three generations, so there wasn't much difference to them. Um, but I think the best controller I've used thus far would have to be the DualShock 4. Mm. I thought I liked the DualShock 3, and I did for a couple of years, but then after feeling how the DualShock 4 is just like an evolution of that, mm. it's just I can't really imagine going back to it. I play my PlayStation 3 sometimes. And it just feels so different. The sticks feel, I mean, the grips feel like shorter. Yeah. They kind of don't go to the bottom of my hand like yeah. <laughs> DualShock 4 does. So I like the DualShock 4 a lot. I think they did a great job with that controller. Mm -hmm. um, 
The worst one I've used in my experience, I didn't have the original Xbox. I played it with you, of course, but mm-hmm. I didn't have it, you know, every day like you did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, I did have an N64. I have an N64, actually, upstairs somewhere. And I don't really like those controllers. That controller makes no sense to me. I have At no all. idea what's going on with it. I feel like they were trying to be cool and futuristic, and it just didn't really work out. <laughs> You have an analog stick in the middle of the fucking yeah, controller. Yeah, but a lot of you play Dexel. Go ahead. Yeah. I think she's on a little bit of a delay. <laughs> um, but yeah, the the N64. Yeah, like you said though, Mallory. The, oh, I'm on a delay. Yeah, I mean we we work around it. <laughs> um, I think my least favorite controller is the original Xbox controller. Like, that controller was, like, I have big hands, and I've always had large hands, but mm-hmm. that controller was just massive, like, for no reason. Like, if you, <laughs> I remember one time I dropped it on my foot, and, like, I screamed out loud because it, it just hurt so oh, bad. Oh, I thought that was the Xbox you dropped. Oh, the Xbox, too. I've dropped the <laughs> Xbox on my foot before, too. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not my favorite, but... The S- Xbox S controller was a huge, huge, huge improvement, and really? I would, I would be tempted to give it to that or the PlayStation Four DualShock controller as like my favorite controls of all time. Yeah, um, but I think I got to give it to the PlayStation One because I'm using that one right now. Yeah, I mean, I guess we can give Microsoft some slack. It was their first console, but I mean, yeah, that, you'd think they'd spend more time. <laughs> that first controller was terrible. Horrible, horrible. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> and we're going to jump into the rest of the podcast now. Uh, what games have you two been playing? So we'll start with Mallory. Uh-oh. We'll start with uh, with Trinity because she just disconnected. <laughs> oh. Okay. Um, what have I been playing? I've been playing a lot of GTA V for PS4. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of my friends got that as well. So we've been playing together when we can. Pretty mm-hmm. fun. I only had the original um, GTA 5 for PS3 for about like a month and a half. So You sold uh, it right after? Yeah, pretty much. I um, sold or gave my PS3 to my girlfriend and her little siblings because they didn't have a console. Oh, yeah, it was right. like a week and some change before the PS4 actually came out. So mm-hmm. um, so it was good to actually be spending some hours on it. It's pretty fun. Um, I've also been playing Little Big Planet 3. Oh, how was that? Um, it... I experienced one glitch um, so far as like one of the first ep- first um, levels, the first or second level, mm-hmm. where you had to kind of get to the top of the level before the two sides of it like squished you. Oh no! And like if it squished you, you know, obviously you lose, but you should be able to like respawn yourself. Right. That wouldn't work. What? So um, luckily, I figured out what I was actually supposed to do, so I wouldn't die and that wouldn't happen. But I don't know if they've patched it so that's fixed or not. But Hopefully. that's. Only one glitch I've experienced. But other than that, I'm really enjoying it. I've gotten to like the third or fourth level where it's like some portal mechanics. Oh, what? I played portal myself, but I realized, you know, you go through a portal, end up somewhere else. Right. That type of thing on the levels that I'm at right now, which is pretty fun. Can you shoot the portals wherever you want so you can just like aim a portal this way and then like go through it? They're already set in places, but okay. you can move them around with like switches and stuff like that. And okay. you have to to get to certain parts of the level, which is really fun. So. All right. Makes, makes you think, which is really cool. Nice yeah. addition. That's not bad. Yeah. Not bad at all. Not at all. Um, so if you could tell people which game to buy this Christmas, would you tell them they should pick up Little Big Planet? I think if you play with a lot of people regularly, um, Little Big Planet would definitely be one of the games to pick up um, okay. for you and obviously your friends or whoever may come over your house. If you have kids in your house, I think it would be great to pick up little big planet um i'm not too sure about single player games maybe you have some insight on that there are a couple coming out so yeah there are a couple coming out yeah um what about you mallory what are you playing (laughs) um so i'm currently playing i don't know if you've ever heard of it but i'm playing fantasy life for the 3ds fantasy life basically it's a japanese rpg game um, kind of like pick a class, you know, so I started off as a hunter and, you know, you go on these quests, blah, blah, blah. Um, 
and you can kind of change your life within the game. So you can be a hunter, you could be a tailor, you could be a chef. Um, basically, you have the option to kind of play as you know whatever life you want to play. Um, I'm kind of this is really pathetic, but um, I'm kind of waiting for Fallout Four. Um, I want that game so bad. So I'm playing any. I can't in the meantime because I know. I mean, I when that I'll probably cry. Um, I will rise up because I love that game so much. Um, but besides Fantasy Life, I was playing some Super Smash. Yes, um, I really love playing as from Animal Crossing because I'm a huge and on my phone I've been playing Clash of Clans um, I don't know if you've ever heard of that game I've but, heard um, of that I've been I have playing a lot of phone, that but I don't know how I got it on here I don't remember if I downloaded it or like when I sent it in for service like they downloaded it for me or something <laughs> but <laughs> yeah no it's actually a really fun game but, but uh, warning it's super addictive and um, it's kind of it's kind of a time cruncher. It's like, oh, I'm just gonna play, you know, Clash of Clans on the train. I'm gonna play it, you know, when I'm in the bathroom at work. <laughs> so you're like, in the I'll bathroom for like an hour. To play Clash of Clans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm in the bathroom for like an hour. <laughs> that's awesome. So no, but that's uh, those are those those are some of the three. I know those are some of the three games I'm playing at the moment. Nice. And of the three that you're playing, which one would you recommend the most to people? Um, definitely Fantasy Life. Okay. All right. Um, I don't. I don't know if Nintendo pushes it enough. Um, I've I've seen some commercials about it, but it's pretty freaking amazing. Especially if you enjoy RPGs, and I feel like Nintendo doesn't fall short with the RPGs that they have available on the on the 3ds so it's definitely a winner nice that's awesome i hadn't heard anything about fantasy life but it sounds like it could be fun is it is it a real-time uh action rpg or is it turn-based no it's real time nice nice it's pretty cool yeah I, I people keep telling me to get a 3ds i'm like oh i'll get one but like i barely do any mobile gaming i usually yeah. you know, i'm gaming at home or if I'm on the go, I have my phone and I play whatever on there. But my friend has a Vita. And yeah, it looks like it still looks kind of um, enticing for me to want to get one. But I don't imagine myself playing like mobile games anymore. So I have one and I barely play it at all. Like I play yeah. it if I'm like on a really long bus or train ride, like right. going out of town. But like right. other than that, you just on the PlayStation Four, or, like yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe that'll change in a couple I mean, months. For me, I'm kind of, I'm, for me, I'm kind of like, I don't know, it's either I play a lot on my 3DS and then I stop for a few months and in the meantime I'm playing on my PC or I'm playing, you know, a lot of my 3DS and I'm not playing a lot of my PC. It kind of just, it just transitions all the time for me. Right. Do you find yourself playing more on PC or on consoles? Um, I used to play strictly solely consoles um, until I started streaming like like two three years ago. Um, then I ended up building my own PC just because Steam is just it's cheaper and cheap. and um, I kind of like playing on my PC in comparison to playing on my on my console. But if I were to you know play on a console, I, I would like I said before, I'm a Sony fangirl, so I would I would be playing on my PlayStation Three, my PlayStation Four type of thing. So I just like their exclusives a lot better. Yeah, I, I'm surprised we're not already friends on PlayStation Network unless we are, and I, I'm just totally tripping. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll have to we'll have to get that going at some point. Um, so we'll talk definitely. Quick, we'll talk quickly about the latest slash new game releases. Um, we just had a podcast last week, actually. This is like the first time in a while we've done like a kind of back-to-back -back podcast. And um, and 
you know, there's a couple of games that came out. I think there's only actually one game that came out in between this week and last week from the podcast. So um, we'll add a couple of the other mentionable ones in there, and uh, you guys can speak out whenever you want us to talk about any of these. So I'll just go down the list, and then we can kind of uh, reconvene. And so we have Geometry Wars that just released on Wednesday or Tuesday, something like that. I don't know. Um, Little Big Planet Three we just talked about. Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, Assassin's Creed Unity, Assassin's Creed Rogue, Halo Master Chief Collection, GTA on Next Gen, which we talked about a little bit, Dragon Age Inquisition, Far Cry 4, Smash Brothers Wii U, which you were just talking about, Mallory, and Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Mm-hmm. Now... We'll talk about this a little bit further in, but there are a couple of games on this list um, have had issues in the past in terms of like being able to play them. <laughs> um, but are any of these, aside from what we already talked about before, it's kind of stand out you wanted to kind of discuss before we move on to any of the gaming news? Um, a lot of friends of mine um, that I play like GTA 5 with and stuff. Two of them, three of them at least, they talk about um, the new Pokemon that are out and stuff like that and how a lot of their friends have it. And it just kind of surprises me that um, like Pokemon like, didn't go anywhere. Like it's still, They still have games coming out and they still have like a huge fan base that play those. I don't even know what they look like now compared to like when I played them on Game Boy Advance and stuff like that. But <laughs> They have Pokemon now that are, that are literally ice cream and <laughs> garbage and a sword. There are Pokemon for each of those things. <laughs> crazy um so i i played pokemon x um on 3ds which was really great just because i really didn't play a lot of the old pokemon games i just i didn't really have them Mm. growing up i guess i kind of just played whatever my parents gave me so like we had a playstation and i played like spyro or crash and you know i had a game boy and whatever games they bought me i just played so um, but Pokemon X was super awesome for the 3DS, um, and a lot of people really enjoyed it. So I've been hearing pretty good things about Omega and Alpha, um, from what I know at least, um, saying that it's a pretty good remake. Um, I'm not going to play Assassin's Creed. It's just they <laughs> are releasing games, and they're not ready, clearly. And on top of that, I've... After the first Assassin's Creed, I just feel like it's just, it's super repetitive. Um, I, I'm i just not a fan anymore. I think they kind of killed the entire series, which is a little extreme, but that's just my personal opinion. Um, I haven't heard a lot about Little Big Planet 3, but I love the entire series, so I'm excited to play that. Mm-hmm. As for um, Dragon Age, also great things. I want to play that so bad. <laughs> Dragon <laughs> Age is awesome. Yeah, I really want to play that. Um, and for Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, not a fan of Call of Duty either. So, oh. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm really not. I, think, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Call of Duty is so overrated to me. Well, what is it specifically about I, Call of Duty that you don't like? Is it just overall or is it specific things about it or like the fan base who really likes playing it or... Um, it's probably honestly the fan base. That's probably what I don't know. What probably annoys me the most, and I'm not a big, huge fan of playing an FPS. You know, of playing multiplayer online, and it's kind of just like I like I said before, repetitive. Mm. You know, like I like to play action adventures or like RPGs or, and even if I play an FPS game, I'd rather just play it by myself. I'm such a loser. <laughs> <laughs> Like everyone, all no, like all of my friends, like all my friends from work are like, oh, like you know, you should play League, you should play Dota, and I'm like, uh, no, because like I don't want, I don't want the team to have to rely on me because if something, if something goes wrong, if I fuck something up, then it's gonna be my fault, right? Everyone's gonna yell at you, (laughs) and I don't want to get yelled at. I don't want to get yelled at. And when I play video games in general, it's like I'm playing video games because I want to sit back and relax, not so I have to listen to my teammates bitch and yell at me, right? <laughs> right, right. I guess that's well, kind of how I look at it. When you think about it, everybody started out playing games by themselves. Like, 
all Most the games were not yeah. nowadays and these yeah. younger kids <laughs> yeah like well when we when we were growing up it, the games were all like action adventure like platformer that's when those games were like really big and on the scene and it's like what we would do is go over each other's house and like just watch each other play or take turns playing that kind of thing so i mean when she says like she'd rather when you say you'd rather play games by yourself i mean we all started out that way so it's just kind of been that shift to big multiplayer games and everybody's online now so I don't know. And I'm with you on that one, man. Maybe I just hate people. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm with you in a lot of ways. Like a lot of the times I like to I like to kind of like zone out and just be in my own element and play my game the way I want, but there are other times too when I just feel like, you know, especially because I have such a, a large number of, you know, people that I play games with regularly, I can jump on to any number of games with them and start playing and It'll be like the old days of, you know, playing games with, you know, this dude over here, you know, Trinity Mark. We used to play games all the time. And so it's cool to kind of be able to have that flexibility to jump into it. But yeah, I understand, you know, especially when, oh, especially when it comes to um, League of Legends and Call of Duty. If you're playing with people that you don't really know and they have microphones on, they can get really assholey. Really, really assholey. The internet is a horrible, horrible place. <laughs> I love the internet, but it's just <laughs> such a bad place. Yeah, the internet is, is you're either going to get a really great experience on the internet or a really, really shitty experience on the internet. And it's usually never in between. <laughs> I love it. I love the internet. It's a great tool and everything. The connectivity and the instantaneous like aspect of it is great, but it just gives people a voice behind the screen, and it's just so horrible. Yeah, they they can they can say whatever the hell they want, and no consequences or repercussions or anything like that. And it's, we could have like a whole podcast about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we really could. We really yeah. could. And I think uh, Mal just got disconnected. <laughs> no. Poor thing. Let me uh, let me hang her up and then try to call her back in. Yeah. Are you on phone now? Yeah, I'm. I'm on the phone just because my internet is freaking out. Like I, I um just moved into a new apartment recently, so I'm actually working on getting like a 75 foot Ethernet cable so I can. Nice. So need, this doesn't happen. I need one of those too. Yeah. My Wi-Fi is upstairs. I'm trying to connect. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because it's it's really hard to even live stream if if I don't have that cable running right. and i can't I'm, even do skype calls apparently so <laughs> i was gonna say live stream must be a pain in the ass right now yeah i i'm hardly streaming at all just because it's it's too it's not consistent mm -hmm. like it'll just stop i'll just like stop streaming all of a sudden because my wi-fi is just the absolute worst <laughs> <laughs> gotta get that airport extreme i know i know <laughs> but so you know so far the, you know everything's coming through a lot clearer so that's good news yeah. for, for good. The, <laughs> yeah, it's a lot more in sync. In sync, like the music band. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and to to your point about um about Assassin's Creed, <laughs> I I the last Assassin's Creed I bought was three, and like my biggest thing about Assassin's Creed now, there's two things. One is that um. They announced that there was a, some like side action scroller uh, Assassin's Creed set in China. And I was like, this is the biggest cop out because they should have set the next Assassin's Creed in China. Like that should have okay. been their main game moving. That forward. sounds amazing, by that, the way. It, it would like the aesthetics, the visuals, the characters, the environment, like everything about it would be totally different than what we've already seen in Assassin's right. Creed. And so that would have been the thing that made me bought Assassin's Creed yeah. Unity. I or, see a lot of people clamoring for that too. Like set it in Japan, set it in China. Yo, just do something like Italy and France in terms of like the time periods and their visual aesthetics, they're it's very, more similar. They're very similar. They're different yeah. in some ways, like especially if you look at the details, but yeah. like they're very similar. So right. like what are you guys doing? Come on. I think I think it's kind of just mm, laziness maybe. I don't know. That's kind of mean, but <laughs> it is. No, I to <laughs> I think you're totally right. I mean like they're working really hard in one way, but then like another way they're playing the safe route and just doing what everyone expects. Definitely. Well exactly. I mean so, like Ubisoft has and has had like great games. Like yep. they've been leaders in certain genres for a long time. Rainbow the bad Six. Yeah, I, oh, I'm Yo, waiting for Siege, wait. by the way. Can't wait. <laughs> but it's like they take those franchises that they've created and you know people loved and they kind of just like like monetize them and just have them coming out yeah. every year and it's just like you decrease the quality so much and you see that 
with Assassin's Creed. That's like a prime example right now. Right. It's horrible. It's, it's well, I think I, I think video games in general right now. I think this is a problem in the industry. Mm. Um, I think people have really high expectations. Gamers have super high expectations, and the game comes out, and it's either really buggy or it's incomplete. You know, mm-hmm. Watch Dogs is a really good example of that. Yep. Um, when Watch Dogs came out, you know, I bought it for the PC. I spent sixty dollars, and I, you know, I read some of the reviews, but I didn't read the PC reviews. And everyone, everyone was like, "Do not buy this game on the PC. Like, it is." Oh, shit. Literally unplayable. No matter what type of graphics card you have, you know, no matter how how amazing your rig is, just set up to be like it's really not playable. Mm. And I was pissed because I'm like, I can't return this game. Like I just put sixty dollars right on Steam for this. Yeah, so, exactly. You can't even return it. Right, and the hype is just for some of these games are just so unreal. And then everyone just kind of gets really disappointed. And I think Watch Dogs and Assassin's Creed are, you know, some of the games that you know, relate to that. Mm-hmm. I didn't think Watch Dogs was all that bad. I mean, I didn't play it on PC, but I mean, it's it's got some issues. It's repetitive in a lot of ways, and the character isn't really anything to write home about. But I think for yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think for like their first outing with uh, Watch Dogs, like the premise of it and everything is it's fresh. I mean, it's the concept you hear about hackers and stuff like that, but we haven't really had a game focused on that. And I think it did a good job with that. I feel like maybe a Watch Dogs two could potentially be a lot, you know, better than it was, but I don't think it was like the most horrible game I've ever played or anything. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you, Mal. I mean, there, there's we we do have high expectations and we do get disappointed really easily too. So that's another yeah. part of it. It's true. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> So for you guys it's, at home who don't know what just happened. It's not funny, but it's funny. Yo, it's, it's not crazy. funny because we were having such a great <laughs> this year. <is. laughs> I'm sorry, that was pretty funny. <laughs> Did you hear what I said to you last time? <laughs> Mal? No. Oh, uh, she didn't even hear what I said. <laughs> so we were no, just... say it again. Say it again. <laughs> I was just saying that. Like I totally agree with what you were saying though, is that like um, you know, we have really high expectations for games when they come out, and especially when when the bar gets set and we see it, and we're like, "Oh, it's gonna be this, and it's gonna be that." Like, we're to at, we're at a fault in that way that we like we get yeah. too excited about games before they come out. And yeah, so, you know, in that way, we have we have really high expectations. And do you I mean, think- I mean, for my favorite games, you know, like when Fallout Four comes out, it could be literally mm-hmm. the shittiest game ever, and I think it'll be a masterpiece. You know, with the Bioshock series, every time the new games came out, for the most part, I was pretty happy about them. Like, my favorite franchises, when they do come out, I'm pretty happy with them. But, you know, I just, during E3, you know, you see everybody kind of just go completely wild over games. And then, you know, people kind of just get upset over them. So, the way I think, it's the, I think it's the gaming community, though. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The gaming community is a, is a very uh, volatile group. Um, but the way you feel about Fall far, Fallout is the way I feel about um, Metal Gear. I guess there we go. All right, cool. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's your oh. game. Right. Yeah. yeah, I love Metal Gear. It's my shit since day one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now I think the internet over here. I think it's just a Skype problem, to be honest, because now mine is like acting all wonky yeah. and shit. God damn it. <laughs> Yo. I think it's Skype, man. It's got to be Skype because now me and you, we're coming through really glitchy. Yeah. Um, we'll move into the rest of the podcast. <laughs> so we can get, we can get through this. <laughs> Dark Souls Two was added to the list of current next and current gen games, and um, I say next and current because like we're still in that transition where we're talking about you know next gen. If yeah. we're, we're in next gen, but we're this is current gen now, so we yeah. can just say current gen from now on. But yeah, you know, I called it a while back. I said Dark Souls is coming. I knew it was coming. I said it. <laughs> I said it. I said it was coming to PS because it would be crazy for them to release release last gen games 
after the next gen, seeing as how well next gen is doing, like you know right. that they're going to be releasing the next games moving forward. And I think both Dark Souls two just moving forward, and I think um, Borderlands a pre sequel is going to move to the to next gen as well. Right. Um, do you are you guys bothered by the fact that we're getting so many ports? Um, in terms of like remasters and things like that. Yeah. Uh, I can understand where a lot of people are coming from, where they're saying, you know, stop spending resources and time on, like, remasters and spend more time on new IPs and sequels and things like that. I get what they're saying, but at the same time, I feel like a lot of games that are getting ported, um, or some of them at least, Mm -hmm. some game developers were hoping that the next-gen consoles would have been out a lot earlier than they were. Right. So, I mean, I feel like they might, might feel like they owe it to put, you know, their games on the next gen, since, especially since it's not like, they're not that separate, the last gen and current gen consoles. Like, they, it's like a year apart now since, you know, PS4 came out and things like that. So, I right. feel like they're like, you know, why not? We'll put our game on the next gen too. But, I mean, I can see why some people would be upset with that, because that is time and money that they're spending putting the same game on a new console. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. How do you guys feel about that? Um, I don't know. I think people will buy the games anyways. <laughs> Obviously, if there is a demand for it, then they're yeah. going to do it. And I feel like there is. But at the same time, you know, I I don't own a PS4 right now. Like, you know, my family owns one, but I don't own any of the new gen consoles just because I feel like there aren't any powerful exclusives um, dedicated to those consoles, so I know for a fact that when you know Uncharted Four comes out for the mm-hmm. PlayStation Four, I'm going to buy a PS4, mm-hmm. you know, specifically just for that game. Mm-hmm. But I mean, what are the, there's nothing they <laughs> there really aren't there really isn't anything new. So I kind of disagree. I agree with what you had to say. That's that you know they, there was kind of a lag there where developers kind of had to wait. Mm-hmm. I would I agree with you. Well, I also disagree. I think there are a lot of really great games to play on PlayStation 4 right now, and Xbox One, actually. There's a bunch of games, but yeah. there are also a lot on, on last gen to still play, and there's yeah. still a lot on PC, so there's, there's still a lot of games for people to play across the board. Um, right, so there just isn't a rush. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah, that, I think is what it is, too. Yeah. A lot of people have huge like backlogs still. Yeah. Like I'm thinking about getting like a PlayStation 3 very, very cheap somewhere because there's just so many games. Yeah. Oh, I mean that's but, a that's a great console, and there's I mean so many great games for that console yeah. too. I mean there are there are great exclusives for the Xbox One and the PS4. I'm not saying that there aren't. I'm just mm. there are some that you know like I you know Little Big Little Big Planet Three. Like I you know I could have got a PS4 just for that game too because mm-hmm. I I'm in love with that series as well. But right. um like my Steam account has. I don't know, 200 games right now. <laughs> and, um, Damn. <laughs> yeah, so I probably should play a, a good chunk of those games before I, you know, spend 300 something dollars on a PS4. Yeah. But I really want one too. So it's it's not that I don't want one. It's just like, well, it, you know, just logic wise, oh, if I have like 200 games on, you know, my Steam account, then maybe I should just wait a little bit until, like, something like Uncharted 4 comes out, because then I definitely yeah. would want to play that on release, so... I agree with you, though. I think, yeah. like, there are definitely some good games to play on PS4 and Xbox One, but I don't think, like, the big, heavy games have hit just yet. I mean, it's the first year of the console, you know what I mean? But I agree. I don't think there's, like, a rush, because there's not, like, an Uncharted 4 out yet. There's not, like, Halo 5 Guardians out. Like, there's still the big games that are going to come and big new IPs that will become like those massive franchises for the new gen. So right. I think we're like yet to see those. They're on their way. They're very close. And yeah. to be fair, we've got some really great games in the first year. I mean, yeah. I remember the PS3 and 360 launch. 360 had like maybe two <laughs> or three games that were like, everyone's got to get them when they get a 360. Yeah. And then like, you know, PS4. The 360 has- had some stuff. I remember people like, they'll still say they love some 360 launch games. The PS3? Yeah, because we have resistance, and that was it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it it, it was bad. It was really bad for the PS3. I mean, that's why this launch was pretty huge for them, and yeah, their E3 was huge for them. Mm-hmm. Um, so they came out on top. I I was really happy. 
I was happy about happy that. Happy about PS3 that. PS3 got slammed for like a generation. So. Oh, Yo, for sure. Like five years. And then like, yeah. you know, five years. And they're like, oh, by the way, now we're kicking some serious ass. <laughs> and, you know, they've had great content between those five years, of course. Yeah, but, you know, they were, they were just getting pummeled for a while. And I was just like, oh, PlayStation, yeah. what are you doing? Like, I, in my opinion, I think Xbox won the gen for the most part. Xbox 360. Um, I think PS3 had great games. It did, you know, wonderfully. But at the same time, it wasn't the giant that PS2 was. Yeah. So I think yeah. PS4 is heading more towards that direction. I know it's still early, but it, the momentum it has is crazy. So Even with the, the Xbox One being $300 thirty dollars in some real t- retailers now. Right. We're gonna talk about this very soon of like the numbers, the actual numbers themselves. Right. But um before we do that, I do want to move to the next thing on the on the podcast agenda is David Jaffe. You know, we're all assuming we're all fans of his. Um working on a new title with a new studio. And um this this goes hand in hand with the the Sony holding its PlayStation experience with some promised surprises in December. Do you think what do you, what do you think this game is going to be? Do you think it's going to be anything kind of like God of War related, Twisted Metal related, a new IP? I honestly haven't even heard about it. Mm. So, I would like to have an opinion. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um I, I, I'm hoping it's God of War related. I would really appreciate that. Yeah, I'm I'm on the fence about that now because I love God of War. Like, I love that game so much. Mm-hmm. And unless they're playing to do something really, really different with it, right? even with a new character or with Kratos in a completely new area after what happened in God of War 3, right? like, I don't want to see another rendition of him before... Like in, in between that timeline, because like yeah. I, we've had it, we've had it so many times now. Had a lot of them on the PSP, like yeah, had a lot of them. Yeah, and I love Greek mythology, and, you know, but I, I, I can't help but think it'd be beating a dead horse if we get another one. But at the same time, I love that game so much. I would, I would play it. I would totally play it. All right. I mean, I think, I think it's time for some new IPs. Um, we need to see some new exclusives. I think. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously there already have been some, but. I would like to see even. I would like to see some more. Yeah, I like the way she thinks. With that so, said, I feel like I don't hope it's God of War related, but I hope, being that it's David Jaffe, I saw that article that said he's working on a game. I hope that it's on that scale. I hope he has like cooked up something pretty amazing, kind of on that scale. Whether it's like a completely different story and character, like you said, like completely different genre. Like I hope it's on that God of War scale. Yeah, I'll say that. Yeah. Yeah, that's one thing God of War always did really well. Is their sense of scale, their sense of scope was just like yeah. You felt like there was like an environment, like a world around you. You know, mm-hmm. it was... <laughs> <laughs> the hype is real. Just don't have super high expectations. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I'm sure you won't disappoint, I'm sure he won't disappoint. So right. I'm with you on that one. I'm with you. <laughs> Try to ground our expectations, you know. I know. I know. It's hard. It's really hard, but yes. it's better to lower your expectations. That way it'll be like the best game you've ever played. This is true. This is true. <laughs> and um, Microsoft just announced that the Xbox One just hit 8 million sales worldwide um, prior to, I think, the end of November. So this isn't counting in the uh, Black Friday stuff. Right. And... Um, We'll talk about it in our hot topic a little bit more, but you know the PS4 uh, sold 15 million units worldwide. That's almost almost, almost double. Almost <laughs> double, and I'm really interested. Well, well, I'll ask this question now since we're talking about this right now. Do you think the Xbox One beat out the PS4 this holiday season in terms of like Black Friday, Cyber Monday deals? And, oh, in terms of like uh, sales performance, like yeah. between the two of them. No. No. <laughs> no. I think I mean the deals that they have going on are obviously I mean they're pretty killer but Yeah. Um Yeah, they are. I don't know. I don't know. Uh maybe. Maybe. It's hard to say really. You know, at this point. But I guess if it's just too hard to pass up, it's too hard to pass up, but I know yeah. I've had some people contact me about, you know, 
getting some of these deals, and they're just they're really hard to get right now, anyways. So, oh, really, um, who knows? I, I just feel like they're not gonna catch up anytime soon. Yeah, I'm I'm with you on that one. I don't. I think they got a long way to go before they catch yeah. up. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, I I've got to I've got to think that people going into the stores are like, all right, I have this option between a PlayStation Four, which I hear is better, mm-hmm. but it's four hundred dollars. Right. Or and it comes with like two games, so it comes with a uh, Grand Theft Auto and The Last of Us for a Black Black Friday deal. Two great games. Two amazing uh, games. Yeah. 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 Which are both also games from the PS3, which is kind mm-hmm. of weird. Um, and you have an Xbox One, which is three hundred and thirty dollars. Right. And it comes with like two games and like some other bonus or some shit. Yeah, some well, Xbox I mean, Live or something. Yeah. They they have to do that though. They have like to. they they don't really have a choice. They have to they have to market that price and they have to push that price point down because there's no way they'd be able to compete if they if they try to price match that. No. And my my other question about this is is do you, why why is that? Like we have a lot of people like we 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 are Sony people generally mm-hmm. mostly. We like Sony products, we like the PlayStation brand. Mm-hmm. Why? I mean, go ahead. You want me to be honest? Like I I really think they kind of just from the beginning ruined it. I mean, they Microsoft has a ton of potential and you know they've always been the top dog always have been the top dog so you know people people's expectations were really high come time E3 when they announced the new consoles you know like they kind of blew it and you know and E3 is something that you know most you know people in the gaming community are familiar with but I feel like it it, you know their news and and PlayStation news kind of trickled down and more people heard about it than just, you know, the, the hardcore gamers who are just, you know, watching E3. But they kind of just blew it from the beginning. <laughs> but some of the <coughs> announcements that they have had and, you know, I don't know. Yeah. It, it was pretty disappointing for some people. I, I remember going to that E3 and I remember, I remember um, when, you know, Sony had their press conference later that day. People were just ecstatic. Like, mm-hmm. People were super excited. They're like, "Oh my god! Like, I can't believe like that I might actually be buying a PlayStation Four and not an Xbox One." Right? You yeah. know, they the like they was it was so real, and people <laughs> were just converting. Like, there was no tomorrow. They're like, "You know what? Fuck! Like, I'm not gonna buy an Xbox One. Like, I don't agree with a lot of the things they've announced with, and I'm gonna. I can't believe what I'm saying this, but I'm probably gonna buy a PS4. And from that point forward, you know, Xbox kind of had to play catch up and. Yeah kind of had to make up for it and they're doing that right now um but obviously they're just they're still kind of suffering a little bit so yeah yeah and they they to be fair you know they reversed a lot of those things that they said they were gonna oh do for sure to, to for people. sure but people were still but they were still butthurt over it you know they're like well I, yeah of course they're like oh well yeah <laughs> just because you know yeah, they're like, just, <laughs> they're like just because you backtrack that statement now that you know people that doesn't make people feel any better Right. It doesn't. When you retract your statements, that doesn't make people feel better. It's so. like there was a lot of talk, I remember, at the announcement of how Xbox might be, or Microsoft might be trying to kind of streamline Xbox more and make it more that entertainment hub. Mm-hmm. Not mm-hmm. stray away from gaming, but kind of make it. TV, TV, TV. Right. <laughs> yeah, that was a <laughs> funny video. Obviously, from their presentation, that's clearly the way it looked like they were going, but that just wasn't the way to capitalize on the great gen they had with the xbox 360 like me as a playstation fan and hearing about the new consoles about to be announced i was kind of scared i was like man this could be another gen where it's yeah. just, xbox is just the king of this whole thing yeah. but yeah oh yeah it's crazy how it was the opposite you so know? quick yeah and, just, well, and, and people were upset i think about the whole you know you had to check in every 24 hours and you know when they announced all that beat mm-hmm. that bull crap in the beginning yeah. um and they were like what the hell you know, like, are you kidding me right now? Right. And I think another big part of that was the momentum that the PS3 had leaving last gen because... Mm-hmm. Um, it had, like, just outsold the Xbox 360, I think, like... Yeah, I think a year prior to it, like, it had started outselling it mm-hmm. uh, worldwide. And and that kind of momentum bringing people from Xbox to PlayStation over that time, it's like, all right, now people solidified their decision to get, you know, a PS4 right. versus the Xbox One, so... All right. That's always been really interesting. Mm-hmm. I mean, we should give it another year. You know, I still don't obviously have any of the newer consoles, but 
um, we should still probably give it a year and see what happens. You know, there, there are probably new exclusives and at the next E3, and I think maybe they'll play a little bit of catch-up, maybe. Honestly, I'm just waiting, you know? Wait, you got, a, you got an Xbox One? I got my Kinect here. You know, I got my peripheral. Wait, how the, wait hold on. <laughs> Let me ask you. How, first of all, how, the, how the, did, you, did you pay $150 for that no, damn no, Kinect? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Okay, I was about to be real fucking See, upset with you. <laughs> no. About a year ago, my brother, uh, about a year ago now, he was saying how he's going to pick up an Xbox. This was like the fall after the Xbox had you tell me about that come out. Yeah. Um, didn't happen. You know. Really? Little, uh, little, little crushed. Thought that we were getting an Xbox. Mm. But um, I did go to CEX downtown here in Boston, and they had Connect 2.0s there for like 30 bucks. What? $30. Still? <laughs> This was after the announcement that, oh, we're going to, you know, sell Xboxes by themselves, sell Connects uh, standalone come in the fall, you know. Yo. So, so CEX didn't know that what the price was for it. Yo. So they just like, oh, here, $30. <laughs> Let me borrow that shit. <laughs> right. I was thinking if you want to, you know, test it out, I could bring it over. But they had them so for like 30 bucks. And I was like, I need to buy this now because when it goes on sale, that Microsoft's price... Not gonna be affordable. One hundred fifty fucking dollars. Can we can right. we just take a second and talk about how fucking stupid that is? It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. For a device that so many people didn't want. Didn't even want it. <laughs> You're gonna charge one hundred and fifty dollars for it. I'm thinking it's gonna be like seventy, eighty at the most. At the most, right? Oh, no. they said nah. About the price, <laughs> about the price of a three hundred and sixty, you can get a Connect two point oh. God damn. So. For a price of one of the heads, how much are the headsets for uh, the the company you work for now? Uh, um, like, so it just it depends. You know, they range anywhere from a hundred to three hundred dollars for our wireless headset. Right. So, um, which is pretty crazy, but our wireless headset's killer. I mean, I probably am a little biased because I work for Steel Series, but Steel mm-hmm. Series um, guys, little little shameless plug here. Steel Series, <laughs> go get your stuff. <laughs> You'll tell them now. Yeah. Jay Blazo <laughs> Six sent you. <laughs> But for like our new line of headsets, um, you know, that are compatible with the PS4, you know, PC, and then also um, for Xbox One, you need like an adapter, a headset adapter that's like thirty dollars. Um, they're like a hundred dollars, anywhere from a hundred to hundred and thirty. So I mean, they're not too expensive. You can get yourself a premium quality headset for less than the price of a Kinect. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, no offense, like our our headsets are a lot better than the headsets that. PS4 or Xbox One provide yeah. you with, or yeah. you know, you know, want to sell you, right? So. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. So uh, do that first of all. And second of all, you know, it, Microsoft is any, if anyone from the Microsoft team is listening to this podcast, which you obviously are, because that's the logical thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, you you got to drop that price. You got to drop yeah. it. Yeah, that's that's too much. I mean, even when the PlayStation Four camera came out, and I'm not saying they're like equal, because I obviously not know that. Like, they spent more time and put more into the Xbox One mm-hmm. um, Connect 2.0. It's the higher tech device, but still. Yeah. $150? $150. And the, yeah. I want to connect so that I can do my live streaming and use it, do it on the Connect. And people like people right. like seeing the face cams when you live stream. So that's yeah. like a big, you know, part of why Definitely I want to connect. First of all. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And the other thing is this game, Disney Fantasia, I'm telling y'all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that game is the truth. <laughs> that game. You guys told me about that on the last podcast. Oh yes, oh yes, it's a lot of fun. I, I had way more fun playing that game than I thought I would. <laughs> um, but n- enough about the connects. Moving on to, again, this this episode is called "Why I Got to Be Black Friday," mm-hmm. and <laughs> there are a lot of Black Friday and Cyber Monday deals going on right now. Do you think that the sales are better this year than they were last year? Mm, I don't remember the sales from last year. Exactly. (laughs) First, let's remember them. Let me remember them. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to say the sales last year for, like, PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 were pretty good. Obviously, like, the established consoles had some pretty good deals. Mm -hmm. I was a little disappointed with the uh, next-gen deals, but at the same time, I remembered that I shouldn't be because it was, like, they had it's just, too brand know, new. Yeah. Right. yeah. 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 At the most, they had like either no discounts for games or like $10 off. So, I mean, if they were to 
create some crazy deals for the new consoles last year, that would have been crazy right. for them. I mean, that would have been like despotism for them. Yeah. Because, the thing is, they, they all sold out regardless anyway. Like by this time last year, they yeah. couldn't get one anyway. Right. 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 So why, why would they have to mark the price down, right? Yeah. yeah. So it made no sense need. for last year. And I think just in that alone, it makes the deals this year better because there are actually some deals this right. year, you know? I remember uh, there might have been some Xbox 360 and PS3 deals last year that are very similar to what the three mm -hmm. the, the Xbox One deal is this year. Right. Like, the, well, first of all, the Xbox One dropped its price, I think, technically three times this year. Yeah. <laughs> well, like the the Sunset Overdrive uh, console bundle like sold out immediately. I got that, actually. and it Did, did you so, get it? Oh, my God. All right, so... I have the PS4 and Xbox One now. I'm a very happy person to have both of them. Yeah, I'm lucky man. I was I was debating very heavily on not getting the Xbox One anytime soon because, again, I'm I'm very satisfied with my PS4 and I was playing a couple of games on PC. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, something came over me where I was like, "This is going to be a limited edition console. Yeah. You're not going to be able to get this anywhere." And this place that is like this place called Fetch was was selling it for three hundred and thirty dollars. Right. And I was just thinking to myself, I was like, the worst case scenario is I can sell this and flip it and get mad money. Right. Oh, for sure. <laughs> and and here I am with a fucking Xbox One sitting on my gaming entertainment system uh, area. Yeah. area in <laughs> I, I caved. I was like, you know, I'm going to play it. I'm going to play would, it. You're a double console gamer again. I'm a double console. I, it's, been a it's been a while. I would love Since to do that. I would original. love to be a double console gamer. Not gonna I'm, lie. I mean, I hey, just you know, come come down to the black only area. We'll all you know get together for some gaming. <laughs> <laughs> this pod this podcast is making me want to go and buy a PS4 and Xbox One right now. More I mean, more so PS4, but yeah. If you get a I PS4, think if, you'll have somebody to play with. You got, you know, Jay yeah. Mar Blue, you got J Blaze 06, you know. I think I if you're waiting still, I think like the top of this year coming up is gonna be a good time. Oh yeah. Yeah. To get some oh, stuff. Yeah. yeah, cause like the thing about the getting a PS4 now is that like you're not getting a discount on anything you're just getting more with it right well exactly so. but i mean that's still that's still a pretty good yeah. deal though that is know? a pretty good deal yeah it's yeah. a pretty good deal I, I won't be mad at you if you get one just say <laughs> i'm planning to I'm planning to double my console up you know yeah you just, got that connect already man you, you were just, smart yeah. you gotta connect when you knew that shit was gonna be cheap that was some smart i shit. thought about it and i was like i gotta do it i gotta shit. do it but i, I mean think, uh, i i was debating I was gonna possibly get the Wii U, which I mm. don't want a Wii U, but for Super right. Smash Brothers and and Mario Kart Eight, Mario um, Kart. I oh. thought maybe it would have been worth it, you know, because right. it's not that expensive. So, um, and yes. a lot. I mean, when that um, the bundle came out for the Wii U with Super Smash Brothers and those controllers, that sold out immediately as well. How much was that for? Oh crap! I want to say was it two I th something? I think. I think it was from like two fifty to three hundred for the really? for the bundle. Yeah, for the bundle. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Because I was under the impression that like all the bundles I was seeing were like still three hundred. I'm like, yo, your shit is literally only three dollars cheaper than the Xbox One. Right. No, no, I know it's not that much. I don't know off the top of my head, but I knew yeah. it wasn't that much. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, I should have fucking did that. Because <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm looking at Wii U's too. I want to play some Mario Kart Eight. <laughs> I just want to play Bayonetta. That's all I want to fucking play. <laughs> That's all I want. Oh man. Anyway, we're moving on to the hot topics of the podcast because this is a hot episode. Do you, either of you have some guest topics you'd like to introduce into the podcast before we move on to anything else? Um, guest topics? Mm-hmm. It could be anything you want. Oh, um, hmm. the only topic I want to talk about is probably Fallout. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Let's let's talk about Fallout. Let's talk about this for a second. <laughs> What were the latest rumors you heard about Fallout? Oh my god. So I guess the latest rumor um, was that, uh, I guess a place, uh, I don't know if it was in Germany, I don't know where, but basically there was a trademark for Fallout, what was it called? Something about Boston. Yes! Uh, yeah, yes. so um, yeah, IGN reported about it, Game Informer reported about it, and then you know a few, a few hours later it was debunked. Um, but 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 the huge uh, rumor before that was the trick website Survivor2299.com. I don't know if you guys even heard about that. I might have heard a glimmer from okay. someone. Okay. So this is what happened. So basically, there was just this you know website that apparently Bethesda like in in the code you know it was supposed to be 
from Bethesda. It was like some marketing hype that they created, but basically there was some Morse code on the page. It was a black page, and it was just like this Morse code that was talking about like Boston and Vault 4, and people lost their shit. People lost their shit on Reddit. I lost my shit. I'm like, this is it. This is it. Like, it's coming out. Like I'm, you know, I'm I'm ready for this, mm. and you know, within the within the next few weeks, it kind of like flourished a little bit. Like you could see like the Fallout, you know, terminal, and you could see here some more Morse code, and it looked legit. It was oh, super God. legit, and Bethesda never commented on it, right? It's Morse it's like trolls. Oh my God, yeah. So it's been it's like two weeks at this point. I'm like, this is it. Like, there's no way. I mean, Bethesda <laughs> Bethesda didn't say anything. They're kind of quiet about it. So <laughs> if this is the case, then this is this is a real thing, and. And people on Twitter were freaking out. And then uh, um, finally, uh, one of Bethesda's employees came out and were like, yeah, we are not affiliated with Survivor2299.com. So the guy ended up doing an AMA on Reddit. And everyone's like, I fucking hate you, but I fucking love you. Because, that was, <laughs> <laughs> because it was really good. Like, it was super awesome. Like, right. the, what you did was amazing. Um, so I'm just kind of done with the hype. And I mean, not the hype with the rumors because I believe every single one of them and then I just want to curl up and cry because I'm like, why did I even believe that? Oh my God. <laughs> it's so sad. <laughs> but um, I guess there's now there's some rumors that they're going to announce at the video game VGX, you know, mm. um, who knows? I really don't know. I, I want to believe, but I should probably not. I'm Now I'm, I'm all right. I'm on the same camp. I don't know what to believe anymore because we've heard so many things i would love for it to be in boston oh i think right. it will be i honestly think it will be if it's not <sighs> did, did, we hear, did we hear rumors about that from like two years ago when they were like yeah. oh they're scout they're sending scouts or sending yeah. a scouting yeah. party to like scope out boston i was like <gasps> yeah yes yes <laughs> yeah oh yeah so i mean it, it just makes sense that it would be there. Um, I don't know where else it would take place in the United States, to be honest. I think it would be a perfect follow-up. And it's funny because could Jeffrey be New York. Knight... Uh, yeah, it could be. It could be New York. New but York it would make... Now. Yeah, but I think it would make sense for it to be in Boston. It just makes sense. And it's funny because Jeffrey Knightley was just... Um, you know, he's a host of the VGX. And he was mm -hmm. just out to dinner with some Bethesda employees. And everybody freaks out. They're like, oh my god, Fallout 4... <laughs> it's happening, and it's funny, if you go on Bethesda's Facebook page, every single post they make about, you know, the Evil Within, Wolfenstein, or whatever, mm -hmm. all the comments consist of Fallout 4. I mean, every <laughs> single one of them. People are like, Fallout 4, Fallout What 4. about Fallout? Yeah. Hey, Evil Within just released, I don't care, I want Fallout. <laughs> and everyone's like, it's probably not going to come out, Mallory. Like, just don't uh, don't get your hopes up. I'm like, it, it's coming out. If they didn't create a Fallout 4, they're fucking stupid. That's money down the drain they don't even care about. Right. It'll they, happen. Yeah. Okay, I'm done with Fallout now. Well, 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 I'm so obsessed with it. It's just, it's, it's kind of sick. Okay, <laughs> one more question about Fallout before I ask another question that's actually not on the agenda. What did you like more, Fallout Three or Fallout New Vegas? Um, well, the Fall Fallout Three Fallout Three storyline is so much more powerful than New Vegas' storyline. But yes. um, I I like the DLCs a lot better in Fallout Three. Mm. Um, but I feel like I like Fault in Vegas better. Mm. I, and it, it, I do, but it's not by a lot, right? Like, okay. it's not by, like, my opinion on Bioshock 1 and Bioshock Infinite, like, mm. they're both really great games, and, like, if I like one more than the other, it's not by a lot. Okay. Um, I think that, I think the mechanics just worked better in Fault in Vegas. Um, like, the strip was, I know, I don't know, like, the whole strip in New Vegas was kind of disappointing for people just because they created a lot of hype around how it would be just amazing and like in there. the middle right there was nothing <laughs> there, there was nothing like there. <laughs> yeah and it was just super hard to get into right like if it's that exclusive like it should be a lot more amazing than it really was made out to be um but i end up siding with you know yes man or the ncr at the very end and i kind of like how you have multiple endings there yeah. kind of have four different four different ways to go but i don't know it's tough yeah, yeah. it's tough i i know most people are going to say fall three i get that i have such an unpopular opinion about video games i think <laughs> <laughs> i think i think it's a valuable opinion because it's a it's a it's I, I think my favorite one is Fallout 3 but i did love new vegas as well so yeah yeah um, no and i get that i yeah. totally get it yeah but new vegas was awesome though that was a, that was a great game 
Um, did you did uh, Trinity? Did you play either of those games? I've never played a Fallout in my life. <gasps> so did you did you play Skyrim at all? <laughs> I only watched you play Elder Scrolls Three, Marwin. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. I remember it's that. It's better than Skyrim. <laughs> it is. It is. It's very different, but similar in some ways. But it's it's a very different game. It's it's right. kind of like that, but like in a post apocalyptic nuclear world type of thing. And it's I've like, seen uh, video footage and stuff like that. I've just uh, I've never played them. I I know that there's a huge fan base and everything. I just never like the animation you? is very stiff. It's very like yeah, I can see that polished in that way. But like the it's even so, it's so immersive. It's right. Mm. Mallory. Well, like, the storyline, oh my god, super immersive, I mean, huh, please, I might as well work for Bethesda, oh my god. But, Bethesda? <laughs> but, um, no, I mean, the storyline, I don't know, Skyrim wouldn't have been a bad game for me, it just felt like a grocery list of things to do, you know, like, the storyline was just kind of trickled throughout, and it was just like, what, where am I? Like, what am I doing? Like, how That's do I get back to the main storyline? Whereas Fallout, every quest kind of matters, and it intertwines with the main story, mm. right? And it does determine, you know, the outcome of the game. It, de- it determines... More cohesive in that way. Yeah, Exa- Exactly. That. Yeah. And mm. I like that a lot better, right, than kind of just being scatterbrained in Skyrim and having to do this and having to do that, but it doesn't really kind of matter in the end Fucking sometimes, you know? I <laughs> 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 I know. I know. I, I agree with you, though. I, now that I'm thinking about it that way, like, yeah, you're totally right about that. Yeah. So. You know, what, what do you... All right. So, the Video Game Awards, two years ago, was all right. I remember it just being like, okay, all right, cool. Was that, like, the first year they called it VGX, I think? I think that was last year. Okay. Last year was but, the first time they called it VGX, and I right. fucking hated it. Yeah. Didn't didn't they announce Skyrim at the at the Video Game Awards though a few years ago? Probably. I think yeah. they did, and I think that's why people are expecting Fallout Four. But I, I'm like I said, not gonna expect it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I will, but I'm not gonna tell anybody. I'm not gonna say anything. Anymore. <laughs> what What are your thoughts on the VGX or the Video Game Awards show in general? Mm, I don't know. It's there. It's a thing. <laughs> I I think they I think in recent years it's kind of been just this cool kind of holiday video game show to watch and it was just cool you know why not we like to watch video game shows I think they brought more weight to it when they started doing things like the Uncharted 2 game reveal the yeah. gameplay reveal there and things like that I think they kind of brought it notoriety doing things like that um but that was kind of like the only time yeah, that I was like say. the height of those <laughs> video game award shows right like that was the biggest thing about it. I think in recent years, it's just kind of reverted back to that game show to watch during you know the winter months. You know what I mean? It's so, so. lame now. <laughs> yeah. It's like I remember they unveiled unveiled Uncharted, and it was like, oh, Uncharted Four. It was like, right. oh, with this map with like right. fucking someone's voice over it. With like some yeah. event like that, something they would do like at E3, but they did it at the Video Game Awards. It's like, whoa, that's really cool. Yeah, but, they gotta they gotta they gotta bring it back up. They gotta yeah they like. Gotta, and fucking that shit, like they had a musical performance in VGX, so I was like, "Oh, cool! This is gonna be a musical performance." And it was like totally unrelated to gaming in every way. Yeah, that's see stuff like that kind of pisses me off. I'm not yeah. gonna lie. Yeah, and and it pisses me off because there are so many, there are so many well known and non well known musicians and artists that they could have used that were all based on like nerd culture. It didn't right. have to even be just gaming in general. It, it could right. have been nerd culture in general. Right. And that would have had a, such a bigger, so much more of a bigger impact on people who, like, would watch that show. Mm-hmm. And then Joel McHale. Something, something just dawned on me. I think this is why the gaming industry drops the ball so much with, like, things like VGX and stuff like this. They have no idea I, what they're doing. I think <laughs> that there aren't enough gamers in the game industry. If that makes sense. Okay. I think that there are gamers in the game industry, but I don't think they're in places of power. Right. I think they're more employees and kind of, you know, can share their input, but it probably won't get to the higher ups and like make its way into, you know, the impression of the show and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. And I, I mean, think, I can I can kind of actually even say that's yeah. like a fact. So. <laughs> yeah, it's totally a fact. Yeah. And I think uh, the prime example kinda, of yeah. it is like what happened with the Xbox. Whoever the I don't even remember the guy's name, the high the head of Don Xbox. At the time. Yeah. <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> but, 
their head now, uh, Phil, yeah. is doing great. I think he's doing an awesome job. Yeah. I think if he was at, in charge from the beginning, it'd be a much different outcome than we have right now. Yeah, so. and people don't realize how how big, you know, like a, a face like Phil Spencer is big right. for Xbox in comparison to, I don't even remember who the last dude was. Who was the last dude? <laughs> Don, Don. Yeah, that's... <laughs> But like he f he effed up big time, yeah, he did. Yeah, big he did. time. Yeah. Like I mean, and, and people don't realize like how much it actually does affect sales. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, if you're gonna have someone that higher up, they gotta know their shit, you know. Yeah. And then, you know, they gotta be able to make good decisions based off you know the gaming community as a whole. Mm-hmm. Right. So. I think that's why, though, to your question, I think that's why it's been sucky the video game awards for the past couple. Like the past two years, I think, since or three years since the Uncharted 2 reveal, it's kind of just trickled down. I think that's why. Yeah. Or it could be a big reason why. Hopefully, because I remember Jeff, he was like, um, he was he was talking about like how he wanted to be a, a bigger part of the production of it and making, mm-hmm. it, making it a thing for gamers. That I, right. I still feel like he didn't have enough involvement in it, or if he did, he fucked up. Right. <laughs> Um, but hopefully we'll see some um, we'll see something cool this year. I mean, I'm I'm not holding my breath. I might not even watch it, but right. It just it makes me think almost back to when G4 was G4. Oh, G4! And we had so many shows that were about gaming. Oh, it was so awesome. Even like late at night, they would show like the compilation of like old video games and stuff like that. Oh, we used to we used to be up <laughs> until like two a.m. watching that dude. It was amazing. Yeah, and I feel like the game industry has like lost that, and it's yeah. it's so evident, you know. I mean, but we have the internet though. That's the yeah. thing. Like, yeah, gamers dominate streaming and yeah. YouTube right now. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. I mean, Mallory can be a, a pretty good example of that too. She does live streaming as well, and so. Right. Um, Matt, can you tell people what your live streaming uh, your handle is? Um, so my live streaming handle is insanely gaming without the G. Okay. Um, I wanted to be insanely gaming, but it was already taken. So. Write that down. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I used to stream a lot of Minecraft. At the moment, I'm kind of just streaming whatever I feel like. Mm-hmm. Um, so last week I was streaming Five Night at Freddy's. Five Nights at Freddy's 2. I don't know if you guys heard of that game. I heard of it. Yeah. So basically, you're like an employee at Chuck E. Cheese, and like all these animatronics come to life, and you kind of have to stop them from getting to the office. It's pretty scary. That I'm, sounds I'm a big, creepy shit. That yeah. sounds crazy. My, and my viewers like it when I play with the lights off. I'm like, why? Oh, why do you man. do this to me? <laughs> That's so, awesome. But big fan of games like that, like Slender and Amnesia and Penumbra, and um, I really want to play The Evil Within. It looks pretty good, so yeah, it does actually. Yeah. yeah. Um, I I just started streaming myself not too long ago, so I'm I'm like very very new to it. But like I've been watching people stream all the time, and so you know the fact that we don't have TV shows anymore that are centering on video games, yeah, is interesting to kind of like think about the way entertainment is evolving because we're all watching this content on YouTube now. You go to several different YouTube channels and you can see content from people all across the world who are doing all these different things. They're making comedy shows based on gaming. They're making machinima. They're making, you know, live action, you know, podcasts, like what we're doing right now. And like, let's play a commentary. Then it's the Twitch. It's like, right. it's I'm, huge. I'm kind of bummed out that we don't have G4 anymore, but we have something so much better now. Yeah. We definitely have something so much better. And it's it's crazy because when I saw the um, reveal of Halo 5 Guardians gameplay, mm-hmm. and I saw, like, they had a comment, two commentators, like, spectating the match, and I'm like, this looks just like a sports, like something sports on TV or something that exactly. I would watch. Exactly. I'm like, if this was on TV, yeah. this would be my, like, my ESB. I will be here I'll watching. I'll be watching that shit all the time. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, if it could make that push from, like, because not everybody's going to be able to, like, know where to go on the internet, you know, to see something like that, you know. Right. If it could make that push to, like, even like a time slot on TV or something like that. I think that would be great for like gaming in general. Because it's like a new G4, frontier. It used like to be arena. Yeah. 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 Uh, just gotta gotta get. I don't back know. To I it. mean, I, I think all this is. I think all of it's changing. You know, just like you know, international for Dota two this past summer. You know, it was, mm-hmm. it was on ESPN. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's changing. You know, the the prize pool was um how many million how many 
how many million dollars was it? I don't even know. The fact that you said many million dollars. Mm, yeah, many. I don't, I'm not even saying it correctly, obviously, but um. <laughs> no, I'm it, saying like yeah. That's it was like ten million. I don't know. It was it was huge, <laughs> but yeah. like that that's a lot of money for freaking Dota two. Yeah. Know? Awesome. And the fact that ESPN is recognizing it as you know an esport e and mm -hmm. maybe a sport in general, you know, I think is is huge. It's great. So. I think it is kind of kind of meshing mainstream ish, but I I think if we give it a few years, yeah, um, I support it. Yeah, it will be, and you know, people our age definitely understand. You know, I mean, uh, it's it's hard. Never mind. I'm gonna re retract that statement. Um, <laughs> I, it, so people our age are either immersed in internet culture or they are just completely out of it, right? Like they use they use like Instagram and Facebook, and that's the extent of their knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that's kind of where the split is right now yeah. and i think i think it, it will merge eventually where people will, will become a lot more knowledgeable on that but i know like you know older generations are just not they just do do not understand why people want to watch people play video games on twitch you know my parents like <laughs> i don't understand like why would you want to watch somebody play video games on twitch and i'm like think about it you know yeah. like if you don't have access to that video game right say you don't have a console you know say you don't have the money to buy the game but you really want to see it and see maybe if it's even worth it, right? Mm -hmm. The sixty dollars, the forty dollars, whatever. Then you can watch somebody stream it for free. Mm -hmm. You know, like you have you have access to that. And right. you know, there's a lot of personalities that are hilarious or you know either really good at what they play and yep. people want to want to watch. And I yeah, I don't great. think it's crazy. So yeah, I actually I wrote an article about that very thing and talking about that and like really going into depth about like why people watch and like it totally mm -hmm. makes sense because like especially for the competitive games, you know, people watch people play games right now they watch sports right. that's people playing games right and right. in people those situations want... you don't even hear the players you just hear the commentators and that's it right i mean people want to get better at csgo people want to get better at league and mm -hmm. you know starcraft and dota because they they want to be esports players and, and i right. totally get that and you know if you're familiar with the gaming community and, and the pros and you watch how they play and their play style then it's something that you can you know use for your own gameplay and hopefully get better you know yeah. that's an aspiration of yours so that alone you know is is big for gamers yeah besides the whole entertainment aspect right and that's just like right. a whole whole nother ball game i right. think one of the greatest additions to like xbox one and ps4 is that live stream yeah. capability i think that's great so easy because like yeah. i so i'm using a mac mm -hmm. I, if i were to be like doing a lot of live streaming i would probably want to get a pc like if i was doing like computer streaming because yeah. like the tools that you need to use for your mac in order to live stream properly is like ridiculous you need to have so many things open yeah and i i for a while i was like trying to do more live streaming podcasts so that mm -hmm. those would be the live stream but like then the audio gets delayed and so like some people's audio gets put in after someone else's and like it becomes right. so like the fact Headache. that the consoles <laughs> just come with it built in is just like it's it means so much more to me now having to like yeah. try to do this on my own type of thing. Yeah. And uh, Mallory, I think you probably have better experience with live streaming on PC than I do. Um, yeah. So I, um, when I first started streaming on my PC, like it, my PC was a piece of crap. And um, so I kind of raised enough money to build my own, but it's totally worth it. Mm -hmm. I mean, the games are cheaper. I yeah. mean, you technically can have better specs than a console. Um, it's just it's easier if you kind of have an all-in-one type of thing, right. right? Right? Like a console's great too. Don't get me wrong, but there are just more games available. I feel like on a on a PC, and you have way you know, more, and it's a computer, right? <laughs> way more, yeah. <laughs> so, and I, I that's like I guess that leads into the conversation of you know where consoles will be, you know, in the next ten years or so, mm -hmm. um, which I. I don't know. I, I guess a lot of people feel like they'll still be here, but I feel like they'll end up being kind of obsolete. Mm. Um, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe I'm getting ahead of myself, but... No, I think... I, think, I kind of think it's <coughs> foreshadowing. I think that's totally valid, and it makes a lot of sense, especially because we're starting to see services like PlayStation Now, and, mm -hmm. yeah. and Microsoft is investing in like some streaming services. Like I think they both see that this might be the last gaming console generation, like specifically gaming console generation mm -hmm. yeah and i think um i'm wondering what kind of impact the steam machines are going to have on people moving forward because i haven't really been hearing too many people talking about it yeah and people investing in pc are usually building their own 
that's something that like just was in my head while you guys were talking. Um, will the consoles look more or perform more like the Steam machines or the Steam boxes or whatever they're called? Because with yep. those, it's basically they've built a PC for you. You know, they have the higher end um, models and stuff like that. But it's essentially a PC. You have your Steam and everything like that all there. So you think consoles are kind of moved towards that type of thing? Or, because PlayStation, like, it's its own thing. Xbox is its own thing. Right. Own and user I feel like, interface, you own, you know, right. ecosystem, its own yeah. controller setup. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I don't see, like, Sony... I don't see Sony letting go of it. I can't speak for Microsoft <laughs> right now, but I think they're gonna still want to be pushing that. If, but I, I think even if I think if even if they do push it, I think yeah. you know a company like Valve or you know maybe who knows maybe a brand new company will come along mm-hmm. and kind of change the name of the game a little bit. Um, yeah. it's gonna it's gonna happen, and who knows what company it will be. I mean, Steambox is like nowhere near completed, and right. you know. They would have to absolutely kill to do really well on that, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, but I mean, digital copies are going to be a thing, and I can't believe that people are still not ready for that. Um, mm. I I just remember, you know, E3 when they announced the new consoles, when they were talking about digital everything, people were kind of upset, and they just wanted, you know, they wanted to be able to have their own co- their own copy of the game. But and yeah. I still don't, I do not understand that at all. I don't it's crazy. Care. I'm mostly digital now, which I didn't see happening. Yeah. Like the only disc I have right now is my Little Big Planet disc, and that's because I um, pre-ordered it from Amazon because I wanted the bonuses or whatever. Right. But most of yeah, my games yeah. are right now are on my PlayStation Four. So it's I, like, I just downloaded Titanfall. I have Titanfall on my PC, and actually, it was just available on uh, Xbox for like twelve dollars. So I was like, well, <laughs> fuck it, I might as well. Yeah. But, but what we talked about earlier, actually, Mallory, what, one of your points was that you bought a game for $60 and then, like, it wasn't working at all. And it was like, oh, I can't do anything with it. It's like, you can't even yeah. take it back because you downloaded it digitally. Yeah, see, yeah. that sucks. Right? That's in one like, downside. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I mean, there's pros and cons to each side. There's pros and mm-hmm. cons to having digital copies, right? Like, you can have yeah. a beautiful connect collection on your shelf and it looks pretty right. damn awesome, right? right. Mm-hmm. You can show off about how many games you have, right? Yeah. Um, and then in comparison to having a Steam library and not being able to return games like that and not getting your money back. Right. So I get it. There are totally are pros and cons, but I think, you know, like my graphics card is better than the PS4 and Xbox <laughs> One stuff. So <laughs> <laughs> But it's so the truth. I, it's true. Yeah. No, it, it is. And like that's the thing. Like and and obviously, like okay, it better be because I spent way more money on building my own computer than than buying a PS4 or an Xbox right, One. So right. that's I okay, I get that. Yeah, but right. um, I just think there something's gonna happen where things are gonna kind of mesh together and gaming singularity. Yeah, yeah. I would I would be in support of that though because if there was the the two sides of the coin, right? This is in relation to one of the things on the hot topic about the Warframe developers talking about the you know the next gen consoles. Mm-hmm. Is the the two sides of that right? Where you have games that are created and and you know they're created for PC, but they're not fully optimized to run certain specs on a PC. So like Assassin's Creed Unity, for example, which runs like shit on ran like shit for most of the you know consoles anyway. Right. Uh, apparently, runs like the worst on PC before that patch would ever fix things. Mm-hmm. And that that just kind of talks to the point of of what optimization looks like for for each of those kind of companies and. Um, that's the downside, I guess, of, of PC is that there will always be people who are like way behind the curve who will, who will want to play certain games, and like developers have to cater to those people as well as the people who are, you know, investing in the you know more upgraded technology and the more top notch technology. Whereas with the you know consoles, they they always know what they're working with with the consoles, and so that's kind of like as if I was a developer, those would be things that I would be thinking about all the time. Right. Um, with that said, though, I mean, you get you you definitely get your most bang for your buck when it comes to PC because you get mods that go with them. Um, you get yeah. the PC like infrastructure isn't going anywhere anytime soon. So like right. Right. games that you've had since the '80s will still work on your PC. Right. And I'm like, like exactly, and like I'd rather play Minecraft on my my PC in comparison to playing it on you know an Xbox or right. PS4. Right. It's just it you can mod things. It's just it's better. I, right. I don't know. I'm incredibly jealous of how many <laughs> so articles jelly. I see of Grand Theft Auto 4 having so many mods. I'm like, I haven't even played Grand Theft Auto 4 in years, but 
these mods make it look so amazing. Right. Like, oh yeah. I, I can't experience that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> well, maybe you should. Very true. Very true. Maybe. But I mean, I mean, but think about it, right? Like, it's a lot easier to go to the store, pick up a PS4 and an Xbox One than you know, researching about parts and right. building a computer. And you know, that's that's not something that is easy to do. You right. know, I had to have I had to have a lot of help doing that. You know, I had to ask a lot of people for advice on you know what what part should I get and right. you know what and it's a lot of work and people don't want to put that work in and I totally understand. Yeah. I, and that's why you would buy a console over building your own PC. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you wanted to you know buy your own PC, a gaming PC, those are freaking expensive. Expensive. I mean, as fuck. Building your own is already expensive, okay? But if you want to get one that's pre-built, it's even more expensive. Yeah, and so. People don't have that kind of money. So, you know, that's why consoles are here, and they're probably going to stick around for a little bit longer. But I feel like something will happen where someone will come in, who knows what company, yeah, and kind of change things up a little bit to where right. it's going to be a lot more accessible for people. I'm sure it's in the yeah. works, too. Yeah, yeah I think... Oh, yeah. And again, I would be in total support of that because I, I like the idea of building my own PC as well. But, like, I'm also, like, in the mindset of, like, having these experiences on consoles and like right. knowing, you know, they're, you know, Metal Gear is a bad example because that is coming to PC. Right. But like all of my experiences throughout growing up with like the PS2, the PS1, the PS3, like playing all those Metal Gear games on those consoles and like just the way that felt, you know? Right, exactly. Yeah, I got it. So I, I don't know. I think the next few years for video games and I think technology in general will be pretty interesting. Really, really interesting. Mm-hmm. Wait, he's about to pull something out. <laughs> he's about to pull something out. Had to do it. Oh, he's got his original PlayStation. Had to do it. His original. Ah. The OG PS. <laughs> well, wait for it. Wait for it. Click. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Had to keep it. Yo, I, I think I sold mine to Sakani a, a while ago. Oh, yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Yeah, that was a long time. I should have kept that shit, man. <laughs> I should have kept it. Um... And so we are we are moving on to our final uh, final topics of the the podcast, and um, we already talked about the Xbox One beating PS4, blah blah blah. Um, so why is it the Wii U has the, apparently the highest rated first party games of all of the consoles right now? Mm -hmm. And of course that doesn't that doesn't mean that means that they don't have as many third party games, but. Why is it still being outsold by the Xbox One and PS4? That is really interesting. Nostalgia. So you think that people's nostalgia is getting in the way of them getting a, a, a Wii U, or? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm an idiot. No, no. <laughs> I Rephr might have just Wait, no. really rephrase funny. that again. Rephrase what you just said. <laughs> so, no, I think that her response was to why they're the highest rated. Oh, yeah, okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Which makes sense. Right. There's, that there's still a lot of sense. staying power in like Mario and franchises oh, yeah. like that. So I think that's kind of all Nintendo has left, to be honest. And I think they did a great job with Bayonetta too. They did. Yeah. So that was all platinum, though. Right. Right. That platinum. platinum. That's technically a third-party game that they made True. in the first part. True. Um, but the, the question was, why is it still being outsold by the Xbox One and the PS4, despite it being the highest-rated of the of the three? I think. Because Go ahead. Uh, because it's a piece of shit. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, that's that was pretty much all I have to say. I think, I think that made my day. <laughs> yeah. I think I, something that's a, like a little less talked about, but when the Wii U came out, a lot of people, like people that aren't gamers, didn't know what it was. Like right. they it was, like was still. Right, it was still called a Wii, so just with the U tacked on, and people were like, "Well, wait, what is it?" Because the Wii Motion Plus came out, you know, we got we got what that was, you know, it's like the addition to the remote made it more accurate and stuff like that. But right. I think when the Wii U came out, people were just like, "Huh? Like, is this and your it, new console? What is this?" You know what I mean? Maybe maybe they just didn't market market it correctly, which I yeah. think they didn't. But they definitely didn't. I don't know. I just don't think it makes any sense. <laughs> So, I just <laughs> don't find a place, like, I just, like, it's cool, yeah, it's cool, like, yeah, I'm talking about buying one because mm -hmm. of 
Super Smash Brothers and, and Mario Kart, but, like, I mean, it just, I don't know. It's freaking weird. I think they tried to recreate what happened with the Wii yeah, mm-hmm. when it was so different, you know, the controller and the motion and stuff like that. I think they tried to recreate that with the ta- the tablet that's with the Wii U and everything. It's like, you look at it, the Wii U, so I mean, the Wii sold the most last, last year. Mm-hmm. Right. It was the number one seller. They had the worst attach rate. Right. For games, though. Right. <laughs> but um, I think just the the newness of it with the games it had, the motion games and the price helped it, you know, sell through the roof. I think they tried to recreate that um, with the Wii U, but I don't think it, I don't think it worked. <laughs> I don't think so either. If I had to bet on anything, I would say that Nintendo's next console will be a console-tablet hybrid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that'll but, be a mistake. You think so? <laughs> oh yeah, I you know it's such a mistake. It just doesn't. It do, no, I mean I know it. It just doesn't not make any fucking sense. Just because, just Besides. because there's Android tablets and fucking Apple tablets and you know iPads and stuff doesn't mean that they belong in that game. I right. just don't think they belong there. And and just because you know it's obviously super popular doesn't mean you should be making it too and i think a lot of companies do that and i think it's a mistake and i right. mm. i think it'll suffer again if that's what they decide to do so okay. right. they're that's having fair. nintendo's having a really hard time right now and it really sucks because you know they do come out with awesome games but it's just right. basically yeah. the same stuff over again i it's almost just, want to say nostalgia. like i wish they could go backwards before the wii to and games. just have like a console with a, you know, a nice looking controller looks different from the competition, but still like, you know, that same kind of controller. Um, but it's like they can't, you know, they, they came out with the Wii with the motion. Now they came out with the Wii U. It's a tablet. It's like, I wish they could go back and just have a console controller and be duking it out with Microsoft and Sony with their own exclusives and games. But it's like they're They've trying to be far. this different entity. Well, yeah. Yes. And they know they can't compete too, right? So right. like they didn't even have presence at e3 last year and i think the year before like they uh yeah they have like their nintendo direct stuff now yeah. so they don't really have a huge like press conference thing again so i mean they know they clearly understand that they cannot compete with with sony and microsoft and it sucks you know right. because they should be in that game right. but when you come out with stupid shit like tablets and stuff <laughs> no, <laughs> i mean no let's be honest like if they come out with any tablet hybrid if that's going to be their new console like next time around like that you're basically making the same mistake over again. Right. You know, you My, you gotta you gotta kind of compete with with the other with the other uh, companies and I don't know play my, that same game. My thing is with 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 what I suggested essentially is um, I I think it would be really cool for them if they did because like we they have the Nintendo 3DS and that has been the hottest selling handheld device. And then they they have this Wii U, which is not doing so well. And if they could combine those two ideas into one, I think that would be that would be a, a great step because it would still allow people who wanted to play mobile to be able to play mobile, but to still have a console that they can connect to a, a traditional controller and, and right. to like a, a, a TV. That way, they can have both of those. I think that's what more or less what I was thinking in terms of like a a tablet hybrid. All right. Um, because I agree with you, like the the tablet for the Wii U is like, it's it's a cool thing because it's different, but it it doesn't work well because you can only connect one of those to a console, right? And its battery like drains fast, and right? It like if I were to get a Wii U, I see myself just buying the regular actual the second controller that came out with the more more traditional. Yeah, I don't I would don't see myself using that tablet <laughs> unless I'm like on the toilet. <laughs> which is which is <laughs> and want to play the game yeah <laughs> from the bath i mean i think i think other than that sorry i think my skype is fucking up right now <laughs> i think nintendo <laughs> right i think i think nintendo is oh i don't know if mine is um i think nintendo was trying to be kind of innovative and i don't see them as an innovative company that probably sounds really bad, but I just kind of don't. I, I, I see them based, they're really kind of just based on nostalgia. 
Mm-hmm. And I think that's what they can, yeah, should kind right. of stick to because um, yeah. they'll always make money based off of that because people go crazy. I mean, think about it. Like, people go crazy over 8-bit or, like, 16-bit or pixel games now. Like, it's 2014. Right. And if there's any game on Steam that has, like, 8-bit, 16-bit pixels related to it, people are like, yeah, like, just I'm going to throw my money, like, right onto the screen because I want to play that game because nostalgia. And, you I know, Nintendo obviously games. has that going for them. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's good. Oh, man. That's true. That's really true. That is true. I don't know. I, I, I think Nintendo in the long run is still going to be okay because, again, they have the 3DS platform and people eat that shit up. Yeah, yeah. I do. Yeah, exactly. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's, that's that's always going to be a thing. But um, They've always done well with the DS. With the mobile. You know? They've always been yeah. good at that yeah. aspect. Right, exactly. Yeah. But anyway, um, again, you know, I, I want to thank both of my lovely guests for being on the show. You know, Trinity Mark Blue, he has his uh, site. What is it still Photo by D or is it something different now? Oh, no, that that was the old site. I remember I told you last time I was making a new site. It's DariusMarant.com, and that is up and running now. So Ooh, Very nice. You can go, go check out my portfolio yeah, in its current well, state right now. There will be a link annotated either, either on their faces or in the description down below, probably both. Um, and where can people check more of your stuff out, uh, Mallory? Um, I have a website called insanelygaming.com, so I blog a lot, yeah, and, um, <laughs> yeah, um, I also, I blog, um, which is pretty much the majority of what I do for the most part, but I also do stream, and all of my links are on my website, so, my social media links. Cool. So there'll be links to all that stuff in the description down below, and on <laughs> their faces, <laughs> so you can check that out, and, um, again, thank you guys so much, and of course, for you guys at home, who are listening on iTunes who don't have the descriptions down below uh, for that. My site, of course, blackoni.com. If you want to follow on Twitch, uh, it is uh, twitch.tv slash jblazo6. And um, again, I'm, I'm starting to do this Twitch thing a little bit more because it's been a lot of fun so far. People have been you know, coming into the... Not as much as Mallory, of course. She's got, a, <laughs> she's got quite a following. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. But, um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a great time to be a gamer. And, uh, oh yeah. yeah, that we have so many opportunities, and so many different, you know, I mean, yeah, so many opportunities. Twitch, YouTube, mm-hmm. you know, you can make your own games now. That's right. Yeah, you, you really, if you really too, want you? to. Do I? Yeah, I do. Yeah. And uh, I, just, I, I haven't time. posted videos in a while. <laughs> I gotta get on that. <laughs> gotta get back on that. Uh, could you tell the viewers at home what that is? Um, YouTube.com slash insanely gaming. Is that with a G or no G? No, that's that's with the G. That's with the G. Every, okay. Everything is insane. The gaming except for my freaking Twitch channel. Twitch. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> Very cool. And um, yeah, uh, game on. And Jay Blaze out. Thank you. <laughs>